welcome back to this next session, which is uh, all about taking part in Refugee Week. Um, so yeah, so for anyone that's joining now, uh, my name is Lauren, I'm the Refugee Week UK coordinator. Hi, I'm Julia, very nice uh, yeah, to be here. For everyone, I am the freelance producer here at Refugee Week, and I also work in the podcast industry. Nice. So for this session, I thought a really helpful place to start is actually on the Refugee Week website. So hopefully this is a familiar website to you, but if not, we're just going to chat through it, actually. So where we're going to start is actually just on the menu toolbar at the top, there's a button called Take Part. And under there, there's Hold an Event, Simple Acts and Resources. So we're going to start in resources and we're going to go into this year's event organizer pack. And um, I'll just get it up. Oh, yes, our website. I keep getting pop up saying that Internet connection is unstable. So if this is taking too long, we'll just get started another way. But hopefully it won't take this long in your own browsers. But um, here is... Actually, a familiar face you might recognize Emanuela. She's on the cover of this year's event organizer patch. Um, so let's start here. Great. So this is the event organizer pack, which you can all access on the website. And we're going to run you through this. So um, just a quick recap about what Refugee Week is. Um, so the background, vision and values. Then we're going to announce the theme and the artwork um, for um, our home this year. We're also going to talk about steps, simple steps, how you can take part. Um, and then we're going to be highlighting the resources. So brilliant. So a little bit about Refugee Week. I know I did a little introduction at the start of today, but um, just to recap, Refugee Week is the world's largest arts and culture festival that celebrates the contributions, creativity and resilience of people that seek sanctuary. Um, so as I mentioned, it really can be anything. It's an umbrella festival and it's an open platform. So we encourage everyone to take part, no matter how big or how small that event or activity might be. In the UK, it's been running since 1998. So this will be our 26th festival. Um, and it's always the week of World Refugee Day. So this year will be the 17th to the 23rd of June. Um, in the past, we've had everything from sports to music festivals to um, faith get-togethers, community get-togethers, uh, football tournaments, cooking classes. It really can be anything. And it's open uh, to individuals as well as organizations and businesses and, and clubs. Um, I mean, we've been doing a lot of stuff around podcasts, so it really can be digital in person. It's open to everyone's creativity. Uh, so a little bit about the background. So I mentioned it's been running uh, in the UK since 1998, and it's a partnership. So we work for an organization called Counterpoints, which is the coordinators of Refugee Week um, in the UK, but there's also uh, Refugee Week in Wales, Refugee Week in uh, Scotland as well, and they are organized by their uh, well, uh, Refugee Council's um, counterparts. Um, and all of Refugee Week activities is working towards bringing about more informed attitudes and a better understanding of the reasons that people are, are displaced and the challenges that people face seeking asylum but it's also a platform and as we mentioned there's a lot of joy and celebration in refugee week and it's a moment for us all to come together and use arts and cultures this moment for connection and community um so yeah that's a little bit about the background uh, and there's all this information is in the pack so you can read it uh in in, in your own time as well Great. So a big question is, do I need to ask for permission to take part? And the answer is no. Um, everyone can participate. Um, but we just ask you that you are aligning with our values and with our uh, shared principles. And I'll read them out now, but you can also find all of this with a bit more information on our About Us page on the website. So um, our values are that we all have the right to be safe. Refugees are not a single group. There's a bigger us. Refugee Week is open to all. Refugee Week is a space for many stories. So no single narrative represents the refugee experience. Arts and culture make change. Leadership matters. Celebrating contributions. And lastly, reclaiming refugee 
Um, and I just want to say here that we at Refugee Week use the word refugee because of its historical and legal meaning and significance, but we obviously respect, respect um, everyone's right to self-identify and um, we would never put any labels on anyone. Thank you. So I know we've been hearing about our theme through all the different speakers today. So um, yeah, as I mentioned, our home is the theme for 2024, from the places we gather to share meals to our collective home, Planet Earth. And there is a yearly uh, theme for Refugee Week, but it's always an invitation. It's never an obligation. You don't have to use the theme in any of your planning, but sometimes it helps to find different entry points into this topic and just create new kind of energy and excitement and create different kind of hooks for participation. Um, so I spoke a little bit about the kind of home at three levels that's been emerging, but it's completely open for everyone to explore what home means to them. Um, and we're really excited to be sharing this year's poster. Uh, so it's made by a really beautiful artist called Manjit Thap. Uh, she is beautiful, but this, I meant the poster itself is beautiful. <laughs> um, and it's a really, really lovely design, which I think speaks to all those different um, interpretations of home. Uh, and everyone is welcome to use this poster digitally. You can also uh, pre-order it on our shop to get a free poster and free postcard. Um, and we ship them across the UK. If you are based outside of the UK, uh, we can provide all these templates digitally for you to do printing wherever you are. Um, and what I don't know if people were involved in last year's festival, we had a really beautiful, colorful design by Muragai, which I have here on my desk. And what was so brilliant about Muragai's design last year is that he provided all the different elements from the design individually. And Manjit's done exactly the same. So we'll be able to access our home by itself, the characters from the design by themselves, the flowers, the leaves. So people can also create their own marketing campaigns and use it for social media. And it's always just quite fun. Um, so that's a little bit about this year's poster. And actually, how do you take part? Over to you, Julia. <laughs> Thanks, Lara. So we're going to run you through three simple steps how you can take part in Refugee Week. Um, so the first one is support local. Second one is our Simple Act campaign. And third is hold an event. And we're going to go into detail now um, to break down all of these three levels. Yeah, so the first one is to support local. As uh, so the Refugee Week network is really widespread, there's activity all across the UK and internationally as well. And actually, I saw a few people joining from countries that I'm not aware of Refugee Week happening in those countries. So if you do want to do Refugee Week, I would love to be in touch with you just so we can connect and yeah, just be in touch. It would be so amazing. So if you are interested in running Refugee Week, um, wherever you are and there's not activity happening please do get in touch and we'll share our details on, on the chat for how you can do that um but if there is activity happening in your neighborhood or in your region you can access uh the details for the organizers by visiting the refugee week website on the contact page there's international national and regional contacts for people that are doing locally coordinated efforts for refugee week um, and then you can also search for events in your area. So um, the calendar is looking a little bit empty now, but as we get close to Refugee Week, it gets really populated, but you can also filter and look at previous events. So as I mentioned, there was over 9,000 events in the UK alone. So there's bound to be lots of stuff happening a stone's throw from where you are. Um, and it's just such, such a great way to make new connections in your community and just support uh, yeah, your local community. Great. So the second way how you can get involved is via our Simple Act initiative. Um, for everyone who does know who Simple Acts are, just a quick recap. So Simple Acts are easy everyday actions we can all do to stand in solidarity with refugees and make new connections in our community. The aim is to yeah, just be really simple actions that everyone can do quite easily. Um, so you can build your own event or activity around a simple act, or you can take part during Refugee Week itself. And uh, you'll be part of a movement. People everywhere taking small steps, steps to create big change. And we're going to run you through all the simple acts now. Um, I'm just going to go back on the website. So you click on take part, hover over it, and then click on simple acts. Um, Great, and our website's just taking a little moment to load, but in the meantime, I can dive in with one of our simple acts this year, which is watch a film. 
So this simple act is all about the power of movies and films. Um, and so in this simple act, we normally provide recommendations for films that you can watch at home or organize with your community. At the moment, um, it has a little bit of detail and we'll be adding this information and recommendations as time goes on. But one really exciting thing is we're partnering with an arts organization called Other Cinemas and Other Cinemas are going to be curating a Refugee Week film program and it'll be a selection of short films and feature length films that anyone around the world will be able to watch online, at home, on demand, but we'll also be providing the rights already covered for so you don't have to deal with any of the rights and you'll be able to use this film to bring your friends or a group together and organize a screening for refugee week and other cinemas are so brilliant so if you are signed up to our newsletter or our social media we'll be making an announcement about that in the coming weeks um and we can't wait to see all the different places that screen the other cinemas refugee week film program the next one is also all about stories uh but this time in the form of books podcasts and audiobooks. So this is Discover a Story and we'll be rec making recommendations for how you can uh, do this simple act. Great. So the next simple act is Share the Message, which is all about narrative change and really using your platform. So if it's talking to your colleagues, friends, people in your community and really amplifying the Refugee Week message, and um, that's what this simple act does. Um, then the next one is make a new connection. So that one um, is on a level where we want to extend our warmth and hospitality beyond our homes, really going back to the theme of our home, looking at how we can make neighborhoods more welcoming and potentially making new friends as well. Share a meal. So this one is really all about, is there anything that can make us feel more at home than food or remind us of home? Uh, so this is all about celebrating different dishes and different cultures through food and walk together. Uh, this is a simple act that we do in partnership with the Joe Cox Foundation and the More in Common Network. It's a really simple, simple act, which all of them are, but you can get a group together and go on a walk. And it can just be as simple as just getting grouped together and stepping outside, or you can get more creative. I know last year, some people did roots in the shape of a heart and they did like geo mapping. So you could see on like their uh, GPS that they'd uh, their route and then they shared that. Um, but it really is open for anyone to do however they like. I know in Malta, uh, they did a really piece, a beautiful piece for March, which uh, you can read more about on the Refugee Week blog. So there's loads of different ways that uh, where people can stand in solidarity and, and walk together. Great. So the next simple act is care for our home. Um, as Emanuela mentioned earlier in her amazing talk, um, this is all about our shared home planet Earth and the fact that we're all interconnected. So this simple act is to encourage you to take action, um, research climate justice and climate displacement and really see how you can connect with that and also reconnect with nature. Yeah, so we've platformed some brilliant activists and movements under that simple act that you can explore. Uh, and then the last one is join the movement. So as you know, Refugee Week is just a week, but really this movement is year round and this work uh, happens year round. And Refugee Week is just really a window to um, this work that is ongoing. And so we like to signpost uh, to other fantastic campaigns and initiatives and uh, platform that amazing work that is happening. Um, so really, uh, the simple acts is just a way, a simple way of being able to take action. And this year, as a way of building momentum and energy for Refugee Week, we're going to do an eight week countdown to Refugee Week. And each week we'll focus on a different simple act and really use that week to celebrate all the amazing people and projects that are doing work connected to these different simple acts. Um, Sorry to jump in here. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, so just one simple act that we just missed is get oh, active. Um, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> all good. So all good. Um, so yeah, just a quick explainer here as well that this simple act is all about connecting um, with our body, seeing the body as our home and encouraging 
conversations and connections um, when we get active and do sports together. Sorry, Lara. No, no, that was totally my bad. And actually, I, I will just say that all these uh, illustrations are also by the same artist that did the main poster at our home. She's called Manjet Thap. And everyone is welcome to use these illustrations. They're actually gifts, so they have this little movement and we'll provide them for everyone to be able to share on their uh, social media or newsletters or whatever it might be. Um, and I hope you'll agree with me, but I think they're really sweet and lovely um, and just very, just have that refugee week spirit about them. They're very joyful and, and cute. <laughs> Definitely. Great, we're gonna go back to the event organizers pack. So again, if you click on resources, you can see all the different packs here and I'm just gonna go back here. Sorry, I need to. Um, here we go. So that was our Simple Act campaign. And now we're going to talk you through hold an event. Um, so as I'm sure you know, events are an amazing way to bring people together and really celebrate Refugee Week. So last year we had over 9,500 events in the UK alone and over 1.1 million people took part in the UK. And there was also Refugee Week activity in 17 countries. So we're hoping to see this movement grow. Um, events, as I said, are such a powerful way to bring people together and connect um, whilst creating change. So as Lara said, we had everything from school assemblies to football matches, music festivals, and we're now going to run you through some simple tools how you can start planning your event. Definitely. So a lot of people on this call I know are really experienced event organisers, so all of this might be really familiar to you. But for anyone that's newer or is just coming back to event organising, these are just some helpful things to consider when planning an event. So we've just collated resources on working in partnership, uh, fundraising, reaching new audiences, thinking about participatory decision making and lived experience leadership. Uh, there's also some resources on safety and well-being, accessibility and evaluation. And basically, when you're ready to, uh, when your event is ready, you can submit it to the Refugee Week calendar. So when you click on this button, it will take you to this page here, which is submit an event. Uh, we're just going to quickly show you what this form looks like. Um, the first thing to do is to create uh, an account. And once you have an account, you'll be taken to this page. And I'll let Julia just talk you through that. Thank you. So, yeah, as Lara said, all you need to do is create a free account. And then you will see this very simple form where you're required to put in your title, the title of the event, event description, event time and date event image, so a photo or graphic. Um, I will just add a, a note here, which is it, uh, this form cannot accept PDFs. So it might make you think that it's been submitted. Actually, uh, it just needs to be a JPEG, PNG or a GIF file. That's just a, a gentle reminder. Thanks, Lara. Um, you'll then also be able to put in your event categories. This is so people who go on our events calendar can filter the event by a category. Um, your venue details, so all the information here, your event website, ticket price, and then finally your organizer details. And that's just for us also, um, because it's really helpful for evaluation purposes at the end. And then you click, um, you agree, hopefully you agree with the terms of submission. So you click this box and then you submit your event. Um, and just a note here, we are checking all the events that come through internally with our team, uh, just to make sure that they're all ready to go live on the website. So this might take a couple of days for you to see your event on the events calendar, but rest assured that we are working on this. Thank you so much. So um, back to this. So once your event is out in the world and um, you want to promote it, we've collated some helpful resources about how you can do that. So there is a folder for you to access the Refugee Week logo. So if you want to add the logo to your marketing materials, you can do that. We provide the Refugee Week logo in lots of different colors and in different sizes. So you can um, add that to it, whether it's a postcard, or whatever it might be. We also have a social media toolkit and different assets. So we'll collect that uh, and share that in the coming weeks. But last year, for example, that included the poster, the postcard, all the different individual elements, 
um, different kind of uh, sizes for Instagram or Twitter or Facebook um, and some kind of ready-made tweets or Instagram posts that people can easily share. We also did that amazing Thunderclap campaign last year for anyone that wasn't um, taking part last year. That was, we all did the same thing at the same time. And we'll do that again this year because it was so incredible to see it be trending number one on Twitter. And it had, I can't remember now, but tens or well, 100,000 people interacted with the um, Thunderclap. So it'll be connected to this year's Our Home. Uh, you also have access to the poster and postcard, as I mentioned. You can order that for free. Uh, you'll just be at the checkout, uh, be asked to just pay for postage and packaging. Um, and we'll distribute that from this office. So the office will get really busy soon with beautiful poster and postcards. And then more kind of guidance documents. There's a media strategy that might just help you think about how you're putting a strategy together. If you want to do a press release, there's a template that you can just complete for your own event. And then some guidance about approaching local media, whether you're pitching or asking for an interview and also just around safeguarding. So there's lots of helpful information on there that you can access. And actually later today, there'll be a workshop with iMix who will be doing a session on changing the narrative all about local media. So you can definitely, um, yeah, approach them uh, during their session with any questions you may have. Lara, can I just mention that there's obviously there's a glitch on the order for the sales that people are commenting, so maybe just to oh. share that with people. Okay, that's really helpful to know. We literally just launched that yesterday, so I'm sorry that we are experiencing some issues. I will resolve that and probably send an email out through the newsletter once it's been resolved, so it'd be a really great place to, to be signed up to so you can get up to date. Uh, thanks, Tom, for flagging that. Um, and this is just a real recap of everything that we've shared in terms of putting an event. So you can print this checklist out and it might be a helpful kind of guidance for putting an event together. Great. Um, so we've also got a resources index here on the event organizer pack, which you can access via the website. So that's useful information for you. Um, for example, hope not hate. Um, how to safeguard your events, especially when you're doing them online. So I would definitely recommend you check out the resources and we are also um, updating the resources page on the website constantly with new ideas. So um, Lara's just gonna run you through some other resources that you can access. Definitely. So there's also the children and young people's pack, which has a really similar format to the event organizer pack, except obviously it's got a focus on children and young people. One key thing to flag there, and I did see on the chat earlier today that there's a lot of schools that have joined the call. There's a really brilliant initiative that you can register to be part of called A Day of Welcome. And it happens the Friday before Refugee Week, and it's all about creating a really sensitive um yeah, a culture of welcome. And uh, they have loads of brilliant teacher resources and uh, live events uh, that you, your students can join online. So um, if you visit the Children and Young People's Pack on our website, all the details for how to register to be part of a day of welcome are on there. And so we've added that as a fourth way that children and young people can take part in Refugee Week. But we also platform loads of brilliant resources from our network and our friends. So whether it's... Um, yeah, healing classrooms, uh, having a trauma-informed practice, whatever it might be, we we try to collect as many resources on there to have a kind of one-stop shop. Um, so yeah, so that's the children and young people's pack. The social media, sorry, the social media toolkit is coming. Um, so we will share that when it's live. And then this is a really exciting new campaign uh, that we are trialing this year. And we'd really love your feedback and also your help to get the word out. Um, so we're thinking about how can we activate local high streets to take part in Refugee Week, whether it's retail businesses or hospitality business or bookshops or libraries, and create really kind of bespoke invitations for all those different businesses and organizations and, and groups to take part. Uh, so really thinking about high streets and sports clubs, for example, or gyms or whatever it might be, as really important um, integral spaces to kind of foster connection and belonging, and particularly people who might be new to a certain community, uh, how are we activating these spaces? Um, and they all have kind of tailored uh, ways that each of those can take part, but I guess what it boils down to is encouraging people to share the message, whether it's internally through newsletter or staff forums or um, 
stuff, intranets or whatever it might be, uh, uh, to a newsletter or then more publicly sharing the message on social media. The second is to think about how can we display our solidarity. So we're going to be creating a sticker that shops or window displays can put an Our Home sticker on their uh, window and it'll say Our Home Welcomes Refugee Week. Sorry, Our Home Welcomes Refugees This Refugee Week and it'll have a logo. Um, and then the third one is encouraging people to become a venue for Refugee Week. Uh, so, for example, there's uh, venues that might have kitchen spaces. How can we partner with people that don't have access at the moment to kitchen spaces? So we have been having some great chats with um, people that do events around food and supper clubs. So think about how we might be able to make these partnerships and connections. Um, if you work in a cafe, how can you think about your wall space becoming a gallery space? So it might be all about connecting with local groups or local creatives or local artists. So really, this is just an invitation to think about how we might be able to spread Refugee Week onto our high streets. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Now we have time for questions. And I know that we've had our, our screen shared, so I've not been able to see if questions have been going in the chat. Um, oh, but you're going to say something just before that. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead, Julia. Keep cutting you off. No, 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 all good. Um, yeah, just before we do questions, just a quick recap. So we would really recommend you to go on our About page, sorry, go on our website, click on About, where you'll find all our pr shared principles and values. And then if you're ready and you'd like to organise an event or look at the simple acts, click on Take Part here, where you can go on Hold an Event if you're ready submit an event, simple acts, and finally the resources page that we're on right now with all the different packs that Lara just mentioned. Um, but yeah, now we're ready for questions. I think. Yeah, so I'll stop sharing my screen and okay, I can see someone's got their hand up. Lydia, hello Lydia. Would you feel comfortable speaking out loud or would you rather put your question in the chat? I think I can give people permission to speak. And I've lost the chat. Sorry. Okay, Lydia, I'm going to allow you to talk. Let me know if that's okay. Otherwise, can we share the schedule for Simple Acts Focus Weeks? A hundred percent. So um, maybe the easiest way for us to do that is to create a really simple timeline that we can share on social media. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, but we'll be sharing all of the simple acts, well, immediately after this conference. But around the 15th of April is when we'll do a big announcement of the countdown. And then from the 15th of April down. Um, well, can I answer a question from the Q&A? Please, yes, go ahead. I even put my video on. I'm not sure if I can be seen, but it doesn't matter. I was just Tom at Counterpoints. We had a question about finding funding for Refugee Week events. And obviously that could be a long answer, but a simple answer is that um, people, we've seen people have been successful. The most common probably for this kind of work would be awards for all, from National Lottery, not so much specifically around Refugee Week, but for programming that would could lead to Refugee Week. And if you're running an arts event, it's also worth looking at Arts Council project grants it's then probably mostly about depending on your setup probably about local pots of funding but if you want to uh, have a conversation with us about some advice on that we've got i think we had some uh some video resources we've done before but happy to talk to you and just contact us via the refugee week email right, thank you tom I've just made a note of that in the chat. So that was awards for all National Lottery, Arts Council, England project grants. And I've made a note of the Refugee Week email as well. Um, I did see that someone else had their hand up, but now it's down. Um, I'm so sorry if I missed that earlier. Yeah, it's amazing to see that the stickers really work. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Hello, Dina. Nice to see you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, the other thing is at the end of today at 4 p.m., we have an ideas lab and networking session that's open for anyone to stay 
and chat and it won't be a webinar it will just be a normal zoom meeting so we'll be able to speak to each other and that might be a really good place if you have a really specific project that you're working on um you can do that um lovely and then we'll stay on this call for a while open to any questions but then we'll have a break for lunch and uh in the afternoon at 2 p.m we'll have the really brilliant Ariana Abaway, who is a journalist. She also runs a magazine called Ariana Magazine. She'll be talking about who she is and her work. And uh, that's at 2 p.m. And then uh, at 2.15, we have a workshop called Changing the Narrative with iMix. And then at 3.15, a workshop with Faz, who was co-hosting this morning, uh, all about digital storytelling. So you can join that and then the Ideas Lab at the end um ah that is let me just see these questions so ah that's a really good so from libraries so i represent multiple libraries in the local authority if several organize a refugee week event is it better for each library to register on your website individually or create one wiltshire libraries account it's up to you if it's easier to just post all in one event and then have it easy to find in one that's up completely up to you and what you think might work best for your audiences. Um, yeah, completely up to you. I mean, if it's individually listed, it'll just, I'm not sure if there's, yeah, it can be either way is fine, I think. Uh, the second question is from Mary Lee and can we promote our events for Refugee Week through your website, 100%, yes. So you can, if you are doing an event for Refugee Week, you can submit it on the Refugee Week website. It will be approved and then um, you'll it'll have it on its own event page on the Refugee Week website, which is always really nice. And then you can share that link. Um, okay, yes, we're looking into getting posters and postcards fixed on the pre-order. Is there a simple act postcard or handout of some kind would be handy at events? We are going to put together a simple acts resource pack, which could be printed. We haven't planned to do a postcard, but I can definitely look into that. And not a problem if you can't come this afternoon, the sessions will be recorded so you can definitely catch up. If anyone wants to connect with the line as a public art trail in East London, you can reach out to Lorna. I know Juma who works there, so that's very exciting. If Juma, if you're on the call, hello. <laughs> um, uh, Laurie had a question in the Q&A yes. about how we deal with negative responses from people during Refugee Week. Yes. Um, do you want to answer that or would you like me to? Please go ahead, Tom. But I was also just going to flag that there's that resource uh, from Hope Not Hate on the event organizer pack, which is all about safeguarding and dealing with kind of far right extremism and how to stay safe in online and in in person events. But Tom, yes, if you have any any thoughts, and um, well, probably the first thing you know, the worst thing is definitely say that Hope Not Hate are really good at this. I mean, there's lots of different ways that these negative responses might manifest themselves. The most common thing that we would see was just kind of negative responses on our social media, which in following hope not hates advice and practice we is, is to ignore those things and not not respond. And that's our approach. With live events, it's obviously important to, as Lara says, to consider safeguarding the most important thing about whether there's actually going to be risk to people. So we'd always consider uh, who the participants are, whether they're of particular um safeguarding issues to consider and experience in the venue um it's not something that we very often come up against as in fact i think there are many people in the network who do come up against it uh, more often and someone else was asking this question as well someone was saying they're worried about doing a refugee week event because of possible hostility and maybe far right activity there may be other people on this call who are very well placed to talk about that, but I, I, I would say that we're well aware of people all around the country. Often some of the best refugee weeks are in the places where there is um, parts of the community that are hostile. So people have got very uh, skilled at how to do this, um, as well as their safeguarding, or part of their safeguarding might be 
um, being cautious about how much they publicize in advance, what kind of staffing or security um, needs to be in place, and I guess the intelligence about what um, hostile groups might be planning. But I would say over, overwhelmingly, our experience is that the hostile groups stay away from these Refugee Week events because it's a big public show of support and their opposition looks very pathetic and um, puny very often. Um, but of course, it is something to be very aware of. Refugee Week for us overall is about focusing on the positive and it's about getting those positive stories out. And it overwhelmingly, it's an incredibly successful campaign in doing that. But if you've got some specific queries about that, feel free to email us and we can either respond and also probably connect you to someone who's in a, maybe in a similar position to you to share some of the practice that they have. Um, are you hosting a Refugee Week event yourself in London this year and how can we attend or take part? Yes, so there's always loads of Refugee Week activity happening in London and across lots of different boroughs. So a good way to find out is uh, on the Refugee Week website, um, probably closer to end of April, early May is when the website will start getting more populated. Uh, but if you're interested in finding out more in, in a specific borough, we will we'll know what's happening before it's on the website. So please feel free to reach out and we can put you in touch. Um, but there's always events, for example, at the South Bank Centre, I know the VNA, um, the British Library, a lot of the bigger institutions as well as obviously smaller venues as well. Um, Um, yeah, I've seen a couple of questions on language. I guess because we do provide all the resources digitally, it's always um, available for people to do uh, translations for their, whatever is most appropriate for their local community. Um, one thing that I might flag, and I know that my colleague Faz will be touching a little bit about this afternoon, is a really brilliant uh, platform or website that we use is called Canva, C-A-N-V-A, which you can really easily just put the poster, if you use a blank version of the poster, and then you can add your own captions or, or writing on it in whichever language and then do do printing that way. Yes, <laughs> shout out to Canva, it's amazing. Um, in terms of other accessibility considerations, um, oh, I just lost that question. Any particular advice on prioritizing languages without excluding groups? I'm not sure if I have a very good answer to that. I think we could do a little follow up on that and get some advice yeah. on translation. There's some very well. Julia's had a lot of experience, I know, <laughs> translating magazines. So there's there is some advice about how to approach that. Um... And thanks, Katya, um, yeah, for your clarification in the chat about that. Sorry, Anna, for I think I didn't, wasn't very clear. I don't think Canva does have a translation function. It probably does, though, but I was, I'd very, really recommend um, ChatGPT is actually really fantastic for translation, but then you can just add it onto design on Canva. Uh, but maybe it does have an add-on. I know Canva's got loads of brilliant things. <laughs> <laughs> or a deep L for translations. Canva does translation, learning something every day. <laughs> Great. This is a fantastic hive mind we've got access to. I'm going to try and think of some <laughs> questions to put out to people ourselves. It's Ideas Lab already. Yes, it is. <laughs> Brilliant. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, as I mentioned, we do have that Ideas Lab later today if you're working on a more specific thing or want a bit more chunky one on one. And obviously, it'd be a bit nicer to be able to see each other and not through the chat. But Laura, could I just ask a general question that might be yes. useful to people to know? How, what sort of communications, how regularly will be people getting sort of newsletter updates as well as the social media? What can they expect? Because there's a lot of things to come now. 
Yes, definitely. So we'll be doing definitely a follow up newsletter. Uh, we do more or less every month, but as we get closer to Refugee Week and there's more updates, um, I think there's maybe a month or two where there's two newsletters a month. Um, we hope that the newsletters are helpful. Um, we all share um, the resources, of course, the all these packs that we went through, but obviously the new social media toolkit, which is to come. Um, when we have the final details of the Thunderclap, we'll share that on, on uh, the newsletter as well. We also um, often get contacted by artists or projects that are looking for venues or uh, looking for venue partners during Refugee Week or just want to introduce the work they do. So we have a lot of really beautiful guest blogs and articles which you can read about on the website, but we'll also link to them on the newsletter. Um, we have the brilliant Faz, who you met earlier today, is our digital producer and runs a lot of the social media on uh, for Refugee Week on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And that's a really great place. We share opportunities, not just Refugee Week opportunities, but from our friends and network as well. So please do share things that you think would be of interest to the rest of the network. Great, so we have Holly from v &A, who is um yeah we're doing planning lots of fantastic things for refugee week at the vna yes alexia yes i would recommend if you've used ai for translation to have it double checked for someone else 100 percent. brilliant so i will stay on the call for another five or 10 minutes or so but everyone, you're very welcome to um, jump off the call. We'll be regrouping at 2 p.m. for a speech by Ariana of Abawe. Uh, she's really brilliant and runs the Ariana magazine. So she'll be talking a little bit about who she is and the work she does. Um, and then we'll have a workshop on changing the narrative, followed by digital storytelling. And then finally, Ideas Lab for anyone that wants to stay and chat. Um, thank you so, so, so much for joining us this morning. It's so been brilliant to see so many people joining us from so many different places. Um, and yeah, it's just a real privilege to be part of this network with you. And I can't wait to see how you all celebrate Refugee Week. And if we're not in touch before then, I hope all your planning goes amazingly. Uh, but yeah, always available uh, on email. So yeah, I think you've got the email now. But yeah, definitely sign up to our newsletter and you'll get emails from Faz and myself. And I guess this will be a really good opportunity as well to say thank you so much to the CounterPoints team, the ones that have been on the call, but also behind the scenes, also our brilliant, brilliant speakers. They were so inspiring and moving. And I just feel so ready to <laughs> take to the streets with love and kindness and change the world. So thank you so much, everyone. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I'm sure we'll be in touch and hopefully see you at 2 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.